Welcome to SaltCast. Again, my name is Bob Turner, and I currently serve as the director of the Sunset Academy of Leadership Training, SALT. Our desire with these SALTCasts is to provide information that is useful to you as leaders in God's church to help strengthen your leadership and to provide information that will also help develop the next generation of leaders. In our last SALT cast, we talked about the idea of character. We focused in on what David wrote in Psalm 15 and the importance, yes, of integrity and righteousness and truth, but really focusing on those words, walks, works, and speaks. The idea is not just what we do, but it becomes who we are. And as I mentioned, one of the areas that we want to focus on in today's SALTCAST is the idea of trust and how do we develop a trustworthy character. Several years ago, my wife and I attended a Chamber of Commerce banquet. And at that particular time, and, and maybe this will date how long ago this was, but Houston Nutt at the time happened to be the head football coach of the Arkansas Razorback football program. And he was chosen to speak at this particular event. And as he got up and began to speak, I started taking a few notes and trying to learn from some of the things that he shared with us that evening. And he talked about with every incoming freshman into the Arkansas Razorback football program, the they would meet with them and they would tell them about what, the, what an incredible priv privilege it was for them to be a part of the Razorback football program. And then they asked every single one of them three questions. The first question was, can I trust you? Can I trust you to go to class? Can I trust you to do the homework that your teachers assign you? Can I trust you? The second question was, are you committed? Are you committed to being a Razorback? Are you committed to giving 100% of your effort both on and off the field? Are you committed? By the time he asked the third question, I couldn't write fast enough, and yet once I wrote the third question, I stopped listening to what else he had to say because in my mind, I thought of just such incredible spiritual application to the thoughts he was sharing. The third question was, do you care? At that moment, in my mind, I thought, if you take a group of people that you can trust who are committed to the cause and who care, you can change the world. That's the significance. But I want us to focus on that first question. Can I trust you? I don't know that we can overstate the significance of trust when it comes to leadership. As I stated before, people will not follow someone they do not trust. The question is, not just do people trust us, but can God trust us? I know that all of my life I've heard sermons preached and classes taught about the importance of, of our trusting God. And I realize that Scripture teaches us that we must trust Him. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 3, it's very clear that there Solomon writes that we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and do not lean upon our own understanding, but in all our ways we're to acknowledge Him and He will make our paths straight. I know the value of this concept of trusting God. The question is, does God trust us? Can He trust you and me? When Paul wrote the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, he talks about in verses 1 and following how that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. And he points out that it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy or faithful. And isn't that really what faithfulness is all about? God being able to trust us? Now, there are a couple of areas that are very significant for us as leaders 
when we think about how we answer this question. Can God trust us? For example, can He trust us to be good students of His Word? God has always required leadership of His people. And those who were placed in positions of leadership, both in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament, were those who had to be dedicated to and understood and knew and taught His Word. When we look at those qualities of elders that we find in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus chapter 1, one key thread that we find throughout is the fact that they were men who were able to teach God's Word. Can God trust us to be good students of His Word? I guess the first verse that I ever remember memorizing as a child was 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. At the time, I was memorizing from the King James Version that said, Study to show yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. And as I think about that particular thought and how that the New American Standard Version says, be diligent, the idea is that we need to put forth the effort when it comes to God's Word so that we know how to rightly divide it or to handle it accurately. So the question is, can God trust us to be good students of this book? We also need to consider, can God trust us to evangelize the lost? It's amazing to me to think about the number of people that live in this world, seven billion plus. Statistically, we are told that every second, 1.8 people die. In the time it takes for us to sit down and watch the evening news, or better yet, the time it takes to listen to most 30-minute sermons, 3,480 people will stand before God. Most of them are not prepared, if not all. God's plan is that we teach them the gospel. Into our hands, as the song says, the gospel is given. Into our hands is given the light. Haste, let us carry God's precious message, leading the erring back to the right. Can God trust us to evangelize the lost? Third, we need to ask, can God trust us to love His church? When I think about the love that God had for the church, Christ came to this earth giving up the glory and the essence of God and coming into the, the physical realm and putting on human flesh and then suffering and ultimately giving His life at the cross, dying for us, shedding His blood for our sins. He loved the church enough to give His life for it. Shouldn't we? We face one of the, the most difficult challenges in our world today it's called division. And as the church, we see so much division that is taking place and over so many different areas. God intended us to be one. He intended us to be united. He intended us to love one another as Christ loved the church. And really, whether we're talking about in the home or in the world or in the church, we know the vital necessity of love. Can God trust us to love His church? But for the sake of our salt cast and the purpose for which we are going through these lessons and as we think about the idea of leadership and leadership development, can God trust us to be the leaders that He needs us to be? Can He trust us to be the men that we need to be in leading our homes? When we think about the breakdown of the home in our culture today, and how many single parent families that exist, how vital is it that we understand the roles that God has placed in His Word, and for us to lead in our homes the way that He designed it? Can He trust us to do so? When it comes to the world that we live in, can God trust us to be the salt and light of the world? 
to be the kind of influence that's making a difference, leading others to know Him. And can He trust us to step up and lead in His church the way that He needs as we move throughout the 21st century? It's fascinating to me to think that over the years I've heard many men use the excuse, well, I just don't have the desire, therefore I'm not qualified. How sad. It should be a burning desire within all of us that what we do is realize that God should be able to trust us to lead in His church and to prepare ourselves to do so. But not only do we need to be trusted and to be trustworthy when it comes to fulfilling that role within the church, we also need to recognize the importance of living a trustworthy life for those who are a part of His church. Our words, our actions, the decisions that we make, the competence that we demonstrate, all of these lay a foundation for how we can develop the kind of character that is trustworthy. We made reference to the 10-10-10 principle and how that thinking before we speak and before we act makes such a difference when it comes to the idea of improving our character. The same idea can be said when we think about the idea of improving our character and cultivating the type of integrity and developing consistency in our life and competence and communication. All of these areas are vital when it comes to developing a trustworthy character. May we all strive to understand the importance of this particular idea when it comes to leadership. Again, people will not follow leaders they cannot trust. Let us work to provide the kind of trustworthy character that not only God needs, but that people will follow for the future. Thank you again for joining us today as we think about and discuss this, this vital subject of leadership and leadership development. And may what we discuss not only strengthen your current leadership, but that it will help put in place some areas that will provide direction for developing the next generation of leaders. Join us as we continue to discuss this vital subject in the future. Thank you again for joining and tuning in today.